Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Tuesday, which means it's time for a new FL12 basic tutorial. And today is going to be on the Fruity Parametric EQ2, which is this guy. You might be thinking, well, where is the Parametric EQ1? And actually, as it happens, it is here. It's just not really all that relevant. As you can tell, just by looking at it, it is super duper old. Because that was the original equalizer once upon a time. And then I believe this came around with FL4. I'm not totally sure about that. Anyway, what, and then the next question that some of you might have if you're not familiar with what equalizers are in general, you might be asking, what is a parametric EQ? A parametric EQ is simply one where you have control over the various parameters of each individual band. And you might be thinking, well, in what instance of equalization do you not have control over individual parameters of your band? And that would actually be in the case of using a kind of equalizer called a graphic equalizer. A graphic equalizer only allows you to change the level of the band. The band, the frequency, and the bandwidth are set. You cannot change them. And the reason why this actually works is that instead of there being seven bands like there are here, there's like 50. And it's called the graphic equalizer because at the, when you start to see all the, you see all of them as not so much a bunch of individual bands, but as a solid line that you're able to make curves with just by the virtue of, you know, moving around individually. That's the difference between a graphic equalizer and a parametric equalizer. So in the parametric EQ2, um, you got these, what they refer to as tokens, which by default are just sort of displayed as they are. And we have five peak filters and two uh, shelves, a high shelf and a low shelf. I do these things, you can move them around and, you can, and it'll show you what the kind of curve you're creating. And beyond that, when you play audio, it'll actually, display the spectral performance of what's happening with the har the harmonics and all that, and that kind of stuff the frequency performance of the sound that's running through it it is not the same thing as a uh, bar scope i'm not totally sure the, the, basically the kind of scope that's up in the top up here which is also um more common in other like analyzer plugins but um this particular kind is basically where it shows intensity as brightness And while not super great for particular, like particularly specific level measurements, where you're not really able to be like, well, this is that plus dB, so much, whatever, it does give you a really good idea, just sort of visually, without much precision, about what's happening. Especially when you can change it, and you can immediately see the impact that you're having on the frequencies, not just by the hole you're creating in here, but actually what's in imparting onto the behavior of the sound itself. This is also super cool when you have a sound that you're looking at um, through it. Move me, move me. And you can see its movement as well. Move me. It's super good for doing, doing something like inferring, for example, in this example, um, this example that exemplifies movement of vowels and that, and that kind of thing. So you can identify what kind of frequency positions you need to create in order to mimic, mimic that on some other sound, some other, some other sound through a process referred to as EQ modulation where you are creating much more specific and complex shapes than most normal filters are able to create, and then where you, you modulate them via automation. So how do you automate these things? Well, because like I said, this is a parametric EQ and you have control over the parameters, you must go over to the parameter side, which is this whole side over here. You can get away with not doing, doing messing with these at all. You left, left click to move the tokens around and uh, you can scroll the scroll wheel to change the bandwidth. You can also right click it to have various other internal options, such as reset, where it just resets it to original values. And then we have different types. We'll get the types in a second. But over here, we have the same basic controls, only now they're more, they're more deliberate and specific. So here's just straight level, here's frequency, and here's bandwidth. This also has much tighter, much more uh, granular control over the parameter than if you were just using uh, a scroll wheel. Well. If you're using my scroll reel, which doesn't scroll smoothly. So, yeah. You might have seen me switch this uh, this button over here that says compare. And what this actually is, is a, is a two different, this is an A, a and B state, where you can store in uh, one state and another state, and then you can compare the two by flipping them around. I also have this option over here to, to store in spare state, where I just over, overwrote what I put in the spare state. So I say, do, 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 store in spare state, and then if I mess around with it some more, I can come back to it like so. This is useful for comparing changes that you've made to see what uh, impact they have without ruining what you were already doing, just in case it was good. Yeah. 
I tend to use it as a kind of a global reset because like if I if I keep everything where they are, just sort of by default, and then I, I make some changes. Well, I have to actually save it in a spare state first. So I go, yeah. You know, by default, if this is all already. Both states are default. I just kind of mess around with it. I was like, I don't like that. Let's go back. And then the spare state will always be the thing that's kind of like that, unless you use both of them. In which case, now they're just both like that. So that's uh, what that's for. Other options down here. While we're down here, we have the various monitoring. We have input, output. So uh, when I monitor out output. It's showing us an effect of the EQ that we're having, but if I monitor input, it does not show us the impact at all. And this actually has a, a very particular value. Um, I'm not totally sure this is the reason why they do this, but a lot of people put pretty big value in uh, equalizing to your ear versus what you're what you're seeing in an analyzer, which does have um, an impact on what you're doing. Because if you're if you're looking for a specific frequency to get rid of a specific frequency, like say I want to get rid of the second harmonic here. Do a little harder. Gone. Whether or not that had the impact that I wanted would actually be more readily, readily noticeable if I were to do so without see, actually seeing the change. And I instead listened for the change. So for those of you who prefer to trust your ears over what you're looking at, that's what that's for. That's what I recommend. Now you notice that I, I, I went in here and I changed the type of filter. And... Well, earlier I said, it, you know, EQ modulation is more complicated than what you can do with normal filters. As it turns out, fil EQizers are just filters, very special filters. Mostly, there's a lot of filters, different kinds of filters. What I was just using there was a band stop, otherwise known as a notch filter. What it is by default is what uh, they refer to as a peak filter, which I'm not totally sure is what it's called everywhere else. But essentially what this is, is that it's a plus or minus particular position, but it doesn't affect things around it. So that you're able to, you know, still have behavior before and after your 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 push versus what you did before. Because you might be tempted to think, oh, that's just a band pass. But then if I used an actual band pass, it passes everything else and allows, well, it, it does not pass everything else. It allows the band to pass through. Now, it's also important to notice that by default, the order, you have steep and gentle sides so you can, you know, go one side or the other. Um... Either way, on the two mode, which is sort of in the middle, um, it bleeds. So even though I'm way up here, you can kind of see there's actually still frequencies present up there. If I push it up really hard, then you can see that I do that. Um, and if I were to compress it really heavily, you would also hear that there are still frequencies present. But if I were to go into the, the steep modes, or really any mode that isn't the two, those frequencies are gone. And you also might notice that when I move around, it's actually sort of creating frequencies. And that is sort of, it's not a visual glitch, but it's not entirely what's happening. This is a, pre this is a result of the actually the method that the EQ is utilizing to do its job. And you might hear this term to describe other uh, EQs as, as being linear phase. The, when it's not linear phase, it's something called minimum phase. There's other kinds of other sort of stuff, but for the most part, if it's not doing any kind of phase whatsoever, it's any difference from just regular EQ performance, it's going to be minimum phase. And basically what's happening is that in order to do what a filter does, not just the equalizer, but a filter in general, it the way that it accomplishes how it does its job is that it phase cancels frequencies for it is. So it changes the, the phase of the frequency position from, you know, like right up right before and after so that they conflict and it causes attenuation or constructive interference based on how it does it and that will create the change that we desire the thing about that though is that you might hear, hear this term phase distortion and phase distortion is where you go so far in one direction that because you're pushing the, the phase so hard it does some interesting, interesting things to the sound. And on just a, a single instance of an EQ, you're probably not going to notice a difference. But if you're doing, doing these sorts of things across like 50 of them on a song, it starts to add up and can become a problem. I say can because for the kind of music that I do, it's so distorted and ridiculous already that it's not a gigantic deal. But there's also another kind, there's also another kind of problem that happens when you're modulating frequencies really fast. And this is something you might have noticed in regular filters anyway, where it kind of detunes a little bit 
where like if you're moving it past a particular frequency, it looks like it's actually moving the frequency, and that's because it is. That's big, big based based on the fact that we know that we're changing the position of the frequencies, of the, you know, the, the value up and down of amplitude and that kind of thing by messing with phase. If we mess with phase really fast, it actually creates frequency modulation. As it happens, that's actually exactly how digital FM works. So moving phase while something is playing creates essentially a, a, a Doppler effect where it pushes or pulls the waveform in one direction and changes it, changes its apparent size, its apparent speed, and thus its apparent pitch. So that's how minimum phase works. Linear phase does stuff to attenuate this particular issue. However, it usually also um, requires a bit of processing, thus introducing latency. Uh, this EQ is not latency less. If you turn if you turn off high, the HQ mode, it's almost zero latency. It's already almost zero latency, but um, if you're doing really transient, perfect things together and layering them, you might notice a difference between them when you have an EQ on one of them and not on the others. So uh, if you pay attention to that, and then you might notice a difference, you can just turn off the HQ mode, and then you won't have as, as much a you won't have as well defined um, high 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 frequency performance. But um, you will also notice that the latency decreases enough to basically eliminate that, that as being a problem. Um, so that's what high quality does one way or the other, by the way. Um, but that's also the difference between linear phase and minimum phase in case you were ever wondering. This is a minimum phase equalizer. It uses minimum phase filters. And these are all different filters. You can, you can change them to be regular filters. And for the most part, when I am filtering something, I'm using the EQ. Different filters do sound different. However, just as a basic, basic utility, I prefer to work with uh, the equalizer just because visually I can tell what I'm doing way easier than if I'm just using, I suppose, just blind filtering. I'm not totally sure what that means, but that's the word I chose to use. And that kind of thing. Did I miss anything? So uh, other parameters like up here, if you don't want to um, mess with these, you actually can change them up here. So this, this up here will change the type of filter it is. You can actually automate that, which is a hilarious thing. You can automate the change of filter type. And you can also automate the change in filter... Um, so, uh, sharpness. You can automate pretty much every one of these parameters, hence being a parametric EQ. Cool time. So in here we have lock spare state. Well, we, we will allow you to change the spare state. So in the case you never, you're not worried about losing it, you won't lose it. High precision monitor will delay how fast the monitoring is, but it's slightly more accurate. It doesn't impact latency at all because it's just a visual thing. It impacts the latency of the visual performance, but if that's not something you care about, then eh. There's also an about page where it tells you stuff. 2006. So that had to have been FL 5 or 6. I really could have sworn that this was an FL 4. Hmm. I wasn't, I mean, FL 4 was the first version of FL I ever used. I don't even, I don't think I knew what an EQ was back then. So I don't know if I would, I would have known to even look. Can't think if anything else matters. Not 100%. Well, mm. yeah. So, you know, you might have, when I was mentioning the filters, the filters about um, last, when I was talking about the band, the band style filter, uh, you notice that in a regular peak mode, it doesn't ever completely remove anything. And in fact, you might be tempted to just take two peaks and just. Meh, to perfectly get rid of something, but if you wanted to completely perfectly get rid of something, you could go to, to the relevant filter type, which for you usually is the band stop filter. Where it'll create a little black hole of ended frequencies. The only bummer being that you can't really attenuate out of that. So, if in case you want to automate stuff. But yeah. Uh, so when you want to automate things, you need to use the, the parameters over here. And if you want to do stuff like um, side chain an equalizer parameter through the peak controller, this is these are the parameters that which you would use. Note that default position is in is in the center, so that's fifty percent. So that means you have to start at fifty percent and then go down or up depending on what what is it you're trying to do, that kind of thing. Um, I believe that's everything that's kind of that's, that's important. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. I use this thing every day for everything at all times. This is the one uh, which not might not mean much because there are other equalizers. There are a lot. There are a lot of third-party equalizers, and there might be some technical improvements to them. 
I don't really know because I've never tried to use them. I have used linear phase equalizers before, but not in not like in a truly right capacity. Um, there actually is a capability to, to use uh, linear phase equalization using the fruity convolver of all things, where uh, it phases in a um, an impulse that's just a whole all the frequencies, and uh, when you um, and that means that it's all turn it up all the dry, turn it all the wet. And then when you, e you use the equalizer to do this, it becomes linear phase, which means that you can make perfectly sharp cuts, and they will be perfectly sharp. They will be 100% razor thin on how hard it is, and that's one of the one of the benefits of linear phase that you can do that. You have a long latency versus a short latency, but both of them have considerably more latency than what the actual normal equalizer does. So keep that in mind when you're doing stuff. Uh, yeah. I like I like the CQ a lot. It has served me well over the many many years, and um, like I mentioned, all filters sound different depending on how they're created, and all EQs as a result also sound different by how they're created. However, if you know enough about how an equalizer is doing its job, you should be able to make an EQ perform the way you want it to, even if it doesn't by default sound the way you want it to. So, hopefully, hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff on the YouTubes. And as usual, have a nice day.